Hello, and welcome to Stephen Bernard's Quest for the Best. I'm Stephen Bernard, and today I'll be taking you to the Victoria and Albert Museum. The v and Museum is located five minutes from my dorm, and is home to one of the most awe-inspiring exhibits in London. This exhibit is located within the Simon Sainsbury Gallery in room 64B. It is also known as the Medieval and Renaissance Exhibit. This display features many architectural pieces and sculptures, as well as photographs of various architectural pieces in Europe. The museum does a great job of displaying these pieces. However, I soon questioned why this beautiful exhibit had so few people walking around. The walls in the exhibit are all made up of brick and stone, which I believe is a way to exhibit the various pieces in their intended states. After walking a few steps into the exhibit and glancing to my left, I was greeted by a wall full of various sculptures. These sculptures displayed the heads of several individuals, all of which are unknown. The natural light from the ceiling shined down to display to the viewer the various faces carved into the sculptures, some of the faces being more serious than the others. I became increasingly overwhelmed by the amount of natural light shining through the exhibit. This natural light shines down from the skylight windows which are in the ceiling of the gallery. The entire ceiling is made up of glass in order to add natural light to the exhibit. This unique feature allows the viewers of the exhibit to see the details carved in within the various pieces of architecture. The light shines down and displays the various unique carvings within the staircase which can be viewed to the right of the head sculptures previously discussed. Along with the light, the exhibit also uses studio lighting to hit spots on the architecture which cannot be touched by the natural light. I believe they implemented the studio lighting into the exhibit for days when the sun isn't shining as brightly through the skylight windows in the ceiling. Another unique feature of the exhibit are the built-in benches which line the wall across from the staircase. Prior to the exhibit, I did not see this feature in any other exhibits in the museum. The benches allow guests of the museum to view the large pieces within the exhibit without having to stand up and look uncomfortably 20 feet up at the works. Of the above, these benches are five sets of sculptures, each one depicting a different saint. They are sitting high up from the benches, probably 15 feet up in the air. I believe the exhibit chose to display these sculptures high up to show their intended positions. As I sat on the benches and watched other individuals walking around the exhibit, I quickly noticed that this exhibit, unlike many of the others, was very quiet. It baffled me that this beautiful gallery had such a small number of viewers. I believe this is due to the fact that the exhibit was tucked away and very difficult to find, especially when I went back the second time to take photos. This gallery has a circular shape which adds even more to its uniqueness. As the other viewers walked throughout the exhibit, many stopped at the photographs of architecture on the brick wall to take a gander at the various pieces. These 13 photos displayed various architectural pieces located throughout Europe. Viewers were more interested in these photos than the previously discussed sculptures of saints. This is due to the fact that the sculptures are placed in a high spot which is not eye level. As you walk past these photos, you become quickly overwhelmed by another gigantic wooden carving which was once the facade of a building. This facade features many intricate carvings which, similar to the staircase, can be viewed with the help from the natural and studio lighting. This heavy facade is held up by several brackets, all of which suspend this piece from about 7 feet up from ground level on the wall. These brackets allow the guests to view the piece in its intended environment. Immediately, as you round the corner from the previous exhibits in the Sainsbury Gallery, you are met by a wall of wooden carvings. All of these carvings are either doors or panels. These pieces are all placed in their own little alcoves against the brick wall. They are made up of either wood or metal, and they surround a large sculpture, which is the centerpiece of this area of the room. Many viewers didn't pause to view this massive sculpture, which is odd to me because the details within the piece were awe-inspiring, especially when the natural light hit the faces that were carved into the stone. I also believe that the previously discussed facade, which was behind the sculpture, stole the spotlight from this piece. 
This is due to the fact that the facade was much bigger than the sculpture and almost engulfed the viewer as they stared off at this sculpture. The Simon Sainsbury Gallery provides a relaxing area for guests to gaze at various architectural pieces. However, its odd placement within the museum is the ultimate reason for its lack of viewers. Tucked away behind the cast core, the Simon Sainsbury Gallery is very difficult to locate, but once found, this enchanting room features many beautiful architectural pieces as well as breathtaking views of the sky, ultimately making this exhibit a must-see when visiting the Victoria and Albert Museum. I'm glad that I was able to bring you along on this adventure as we searched on the quest for the best. In the end, though, we were able to find the best exhibit in a London museum. Thank you, and until next time, folks, cheerio!